Well, it's great to meet you both virtually. And Sierra, right before we started rolling, you had a shout out for our city. So say it again. What's up, H Town? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, Jake, you can say that as well if you'd like. What's up, H Town? Thank you. Thank you <laughs> My mom's from Texas, so like. <laughs> What's that? I, my mom is from Texas, so I'm pretty familiar with all the big Texas cities. <laughs> I love that, and I did not know that. And I'm going to tell you right now, one of the things that really excited me about this film, besides the fact that I love sci-fi, is the fact that you guys filmed in Texas. <laughs> we did. It was great. We yeah. met like everybody in this little town of Whitney and Hillsboro. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, awesome. You, you actually passed Whitney on the way to Dallas if you uh, – if you go up, it, it's kind of going that direction. But but I have never personally been to Whitney, Texas. So tell me a little bit about it. Sierra, we'll start with you. What was your experience like in Whitney, Texas? Um, I mean, it was like super fun. I mean, Jake and I are both like big city people. Um, so getting to sort of live in this small town while we shot in this small town, I think was one really fun and just a really interesting, unforgettable experience. And then also I think that, you know, informs some of the choices and stuff in the film as well, just because, you know, the people in the film live in a very small town. They have this sort of small town shorthand that they use with each other. And I think, you know, being in Whitney and Hillsboro while shooting kind of helped me recognize those things and just, you know, notice them and observe them and everything like that. And also, you know, we got to eat really good while we were there too, so. <laughs> Jake, that's a good one to jump on because whenever I identify myself, uh, and I'm a native Texan, and I tell people I'm from Texas when I do the interviews. Um, the first thing that people always say is like, wow, you guys have great food down there. So tell me about your culinary experience <laughs> while filming Bast of the Night. Bar barbecue and mac and cheese three times a day for three weeks. <laughs> it's lofty. It just delicious. Yeah, amazing. And I, I would add, too, about how fun the town was, was that, you know, we were, we were shooting the whole thing at night. So it already had this, like, campfire sleepover feeling and it was like everybody was up all night together and anybody yeah. came up, like you know making this commitment to change their sleep schedule so it was just amazing i never thought about that but you're right it was like a sleepover kind of didn't it have that sort of feeling that like that, oh like, yeah absolutely like yeah, friends and it's like nighttime and your mom's not up and like you know we're just hanging out watching movies you're not supposed to it kind of felt like that definitely <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it is a period piece of sorts you know the theme is set in the 1950s uh, one thing that stuck out uh, were the costumes and the cars. Sierra, we'll start with you. Your thoughts on wearing those costumes, being around those cars, what was that like? Oh, no, that was like, like, I've always wanted to do a period piece, and I just haven't gotten the, hadn't gotten the opportunity until um, The Vast of Night. So sort of immersing myself in all those aspects was something that I was really looking forward to and something I really enjoyed when I got to do it. So, like you know, crafting the wardrobe and like stepping into this very sort of, you know, divorcing my physical like self from the character. You know, she looks very different and she wears these very specific clothes and has these glasses and this thing. I think that really helped immerse me and sort of settle into the character a lot better. And, you know, I just think the wardrobe was really fun. That was like a very awesome, like just fun aspect of it for me it was my wardrobe and then just getting to watch everyone else's sort of period appropriate wardrobe and how they you know, managed to sort of execute that on such a small budget um, was really awesome and just a really amazing experience. And, you know, the costume designer, Jamie, she's like wonderful. You know, I had a wonderful time like working with her and she like she created some awesome costumes. And my favorite is actually Jake's costume in the movie. I think he looks like super pre Tom Ford. Um, and I think <laughs> I've been saying that for like four years that I'm like, man, you got to look like a Tom Ford model. And I had to, I got to look like this nerdy little child. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, so the, 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 both of those aspects, the vintage cars and the, and the wardrobe were very attractive to me, you know, initially. And then just a really fun part of it, you know, once I got to sort of do it. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree. I couldn't agree more. I mean, the, just as, as an actor, like being able to do those things, like the doing your hair differently and the glasses, like you, you put that stuff on and you just sort of transported and, and, and yeah, we had amazing costume designers. Jake, I used to, uh, I used to work in radio. So when you were in that old radio building and that, uh, that old like control board, I was just like, I, I never worked on anything like that, but I was just yeah. like, wow, that was just crazy to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was crazy to do too. I mean, it, I, I mean, 
but what was just the gift of it was being able to have the time to to like spend time with those machines because if, if like I feel like if I had just walked in and had seen it for the first time it, I, I would have felt so sort of anxious and nervous and like and, and Everett is such a confidence man like he had he has to feel like he does this all the time <laughs> with his eyes closed and so yeah being, being able to spend to spend real time with it in the in the weeks prior was a real gift yeah. Sierra, are you a sci-fi fan? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I love all, I still wear all genres of film. Um, but sci-fi definitely, especially when I was younger, had a, you know, particularly large spot in my heart. <laughs> Somebody told me that earlier. By the way, another reporter was like, she's a big sci-fi fan. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, I get that no, <laughs> definitely. I mean, I think I'm a big just like movie fan, but sci-fi movies are definitely a big part of that. So absolutely. They were correct. <laughs> Jake? What is it about this story that appeals to you the most? I, I guess one of the most appealing things was just how um, so the, the relationships and the dialogue just feel so unforced and you really feel like you're watching this thing unfold. That was the first thing that, that drew me into it and made me think that this was really special. And then the way that it, it sort of defies genre a little bit. Like it's part Linklater movie, part you know, Close Encounters. It's got some like Zodiac in there, The all the phone call stuff. I mean, how, how much it seems to be drawing from different influences to make something sort of new and, and hard to pin down exactly. I really, uh, I it was evident just from the first read. Like I couldn't put it down and I realized that it was something special. Well, what uh, for me, uh, I, you really can't predict where this story is gonna go. And that was something that I really, really liked about it when people see this there's no way you're going to be able to figure out where it's going and that really appealed to me sierra we'll close with this uh besides <laughs> the fact that jake you should have taken jake to eat tex-mex because you you know you've been to texas and you know that how important <laughs> it is to me I, you have not, not you said tex-mex yet but um we'll, we'll, i want to i want to bring i want to mention i want to bring that up with you so was that appealing to you as so far as the story was like you, you really can't predict where this thing is going to go. Am I right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that was something that was so interesting about the script when I, when I read it, is that it, I could see all these just different clear influences from other things, but they sort of synthesized in this way that was so unique and fresh and something I hadn't seen on paper, especially before. Um, and I think that, you know, by framing the movie through this device of like a, a 50 sort of chamber drama, like Twilight Zone-esque, show i think that's you know purposeful and a really interesting sort of choice because that sort of you know that sort of show and that sort of genre you know brings a lot of expectations with it you know like when you, you know you know how twilight zone episodes kind of work and you know how those old like 50s sort of ufo movies kind of function and by you know framing it that way it sort of brought these expectations with it and then like andrew sort of subverts them like completely he completely like pulls the rug out from under you and you know, takes this concept that you've seen so many times and does something completely new and unique with it. So that was a huge, you know, draw for me, especially you know with the script because the script was so incredible on its own and so descriptive and so rich that you know I think especially me and Jake could probably say that we got a lot of that from the script. I could tell that it was going to be something really fresh and really special and really kind of unexpected. Well, thank you both. Fantastic work on this film. It was total escapism for me. Love the fact that it was shot in Texas. And Jake, next time you're back in Texas, Sierra and I are taking you to some good Tex-Mex. Oh, I am there in a heartbeat. Let's do it. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank Stay you. safe, okay? You too. Bye-bye.